Butterfly Kisses is a brand new found footage style faux documentary. Uh, this was recommended to me by Paul Schunk, so thank you for that. I had no idea that this existed at all, but a lot of people seem to be pretty uh, aware of it. So I don't know how this completely passed me by, but it did, and that's okay. So thank you to Paul for even bringing this to my attention. It's currently on YouTube. This is like the only place I could find it for four bucks, um, and I definitely think it was worth it. Now, I will say this. You have to be a found footage fan for this film to work for you at all. If you're not a fan of the faux documentary found footage stuff, I don't know why you would even bother watching stuff like this. This isn't the film that's gonna change your mind on the subgenre. I am a fan of this. When done well, I think it's one of the most effective things. As I've said before, a film is good or a film is bad. Like it doesn't matter if it's found footage, it doesn't matter if it's normal, it doesn't matter, whatever. Like, a well-made film is a well-made film. And if you utilize what you have, because it's just yet another tool. I talk about this so much when I talk about found footage movies, but yes, the POV style stuff can make you feel like you're there. And that's what it does for me. Now, I've never seen a found footage film go to such lengths to try to prove that it's real. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So what it is, is the, it's this guy who finds some footage. Uh, his mom, I think, finds it in her basement of a house that they get. And he just so happens to be a filmmaker. And they really are very self-aware of the bullshit and they address it throughout. So he, he finds the footage and he's compiling the footage and putting it together to you know edit the video and the, and the film together that this documentary crew was making on something, a local legend, um, and it kind of reminds me, the local legend in this kind of reminds me of something like Slender Man. Um, it's this creature that if you stare down this tunnel for an hour without blinking, that he will appear in your vision. And then once he appears in your vision, every time you blink after that, he gets closer and closer and closer to you. And once he's on, you know, in front of you, then he gets you. Which is a really cool, you know, urban legend. I think it was created just for this movie. I don't know of this urban legend outside of this movie. So if it was created just for this film, it's creepy. It's effective. And the way it's done, it, it's smart. Anyway, so he finds the footage. He's putting it together and he's trying to finish the film. And he's getting, you know, he's trying to get people to help him finish this. But people are giving him shit. They're saying that, he, you know, it's fake that what he found is fake or that he made it himself. And it's so coincidental that he just so happens to be a um, filmmaker and um, they keep accusing him and accusing him and he just becomes obsessive over trying to finish this film. It's cool, man. I really dug it. I, I really dug the, the, you know, the self-aware nature of it because Yes, we all sit there and we ask all the questions that are in this movie. Like, oh, if it was, if it was really found footage, it should be given to the police as, as evidence of a murder case. Or, you know, the moral implications of putting something out like this, you know, if, if these people really are dead. And it addresses all of those things, which I've never seen done in one of these movies. And, and I, I was very appreciative of it. Um, there's some acting that's a little wonky, especially from the girl that's in the found footage that he finds. Um, but I, I do think that they do a very good job of making this seem possible. And they really, as I said, they're very self-aware. They're like, oh, this is a hoax. The footage that you found is clearly doctored and they're like taking it to experts and the experts are kind of like breaking it down being like, well, this, you know, I personally think this is fake and they're not, they don't go for that like dun, dun, dun moments where everyone's just like, oh, well, now I think it is real and all of this. It does get to that eventually sort of, but I, I don't know. I was very impressed with how much focus they put on making this seem realistic. And for a faux documentary, it's pretty cool. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Lake Mungo, except for this one's a little faster paced than Lake Mungo. I think Lake Mungo's great. 
Um, but that one's very slow and possibly the most believable found footage movie I've ever watched. Um, this one actually goes to even more lengths. Uh, I think that's why I like Mungo might feel a little more realistic is because it's a little more subtle. Um, but if you haven't seen Lake Mungo, that that's another really good under, you know, underappreciated uh, found footage flick that feels realistic. So thank you to Paul for recommending this to me. I had no idea it existed, as I said, and, and I absolutely think it's worth a look from anyone who is a found footage faux documentary fan. So let me know what you guys think if you check it out. Uh, it is from 2018, and I, I, I can only say that I, I do think this will be making a top 20 list for sure. This is a damn cool movie. So thank you again. All right.